The Java DEC interface represents a double-ended queue, meaning a queue where you can enqueue and dequeue elements from both ends of the queue. The term DEC is an abbreviation for double-ended queue, and the correct pronunciation is DEC like a deck of cards, not dequeue. Because you can enqueue and dequeue elements from both ends of a deck, you can use a deck as both a, a queue and a stack. And I have illustrated that over here on the right. In queue mode, you would be adding elements to the end of the deck, and you would be taking elements out of the deck from the beginning of the deck, the head and the tail here. And in stack mode, you would be adding elements to the beginning of the deck, and you would also be taking elements out from the beginning of the deck. The example here on the left shows how to use a deck both as a queue and as a stack. And um, first here I create a deck and then I offer uh, two elements to the deck last. And that basically means they are inserted at the end of the, of the deck like you would do in a queue. And then two times here I pull the first object out of the queue or of the deck just like you would in a queue. And in stack mode, um, the difference is that you would be inserting the elements at the beginning of the deck instead of at the end of the deck. Uh, but you would still be taking out elements from the beginning of the deck. Since deck is an interface, you cannot create an instance of a deck directly. Instead, you have to create an instance of a class that implements the deck interface. Um, and you can see here, uh, Java comes with two such classes that implements the uh, the deck interface. And the first class is called array deck, and the other one is called linked list. The array deck uh, keeps the elements internally in the deck in an array, uh, whereas the linked list uh, keeps the elements in a traditional linked list with nodes in the list pointing to the next node in the list. It is possible to create a, a deck without specifying a generic type, uh, as you can see I've done in this example here. But uh, it is considered good style to always uh, put a um, generic type on if you know the generic type. That way the compiler can help you um, figure out what kinds of objects uh, is allowed to be inserted into the deck and future readers of your code, they have a better idea of what kind of uh, objects that the code is expecting to be stored in this deck. Um, as you can see here in the first example, I create a deck without specifying a generic type. And because of that, we can insert uh, both integer objects and string objects and other types of objects into the deck. But that also means that when we take the elements out of the deck again, that we have to cast them to the correct class here. But in most cases, you are not actually mixing uh, the, the types of objects you put into a, a deck, you will most often be putting the same type of objects into the deck. And in that case, it is a good idea to specify the generic type, like we have done here. Uh, the generic type is string. That means that this, this deck will only uh, be containing strings. And because of that, we can offer strings to it. We can insert strings into the deck. Um, but if we try to insert an integer, you can see here that the compiler complains. Furthermore, you can see down here on, on the last line that because the compiler knows that this deck contains strings, we don't have to cast the string objects when we take them out of the deck. And you can see that was necessary up here when we had no generic type specified on the deck when we declared it. There are several different ways that you can add elements to a deck. and. Um, you can use the add method, the add last method, the add first method, and add will add an element to the end of the deck, and add last also adds an element to the end of the deck, whereas add first will add an element to the beginning of the deck. And uh, similarly, you can use the offer method, which will also add an element to the end of the deck, offer last, which will also add an element to the end of the deck, and offer first, which will uh, add an element to the beginning of the deck. Uh, the, the difference between the offer set of methods here and the add set of methods here is that if it is not possible to insert an element, the add methods here will 
throw an exception, whereas the offer methods here will just return false. Um, so that depends on your situation, which ones you feel fits better. Um, finally, there's also a push method, which is um, similar to um, uh, like the push method in a stack. So it adds an element to the beginning of the deck. And it works just like uh, add first. And so if it is not possible to insert an element um, into the deck, uh, for instance, if the, the deck is full, then push will also throw an exception. Let's try to run this example so you can see that uh, what I just told you is true. Um, you can see up here in the first deck, we add an element to the end of the deck, another element to the end of the deck, and then we add element three to the first uh, to the beginning of the deck. And that is the deck you see down here, element three in the beginning, and then element one, and then element two. In the second uh, case here, we are actually doing the same thing. Uh, we're just uh, using different methods. And that's why you can see down here that we get element three, element one, element two, the same um, uh, contents, the same sequence as in the first example here, uh, the same permutation. And then at the end here, we actually push element four to the deck, to the second deck. And that is this uh, permutation that we see down here. We have element four added to the beginning of the deck and then element three, one and two that were added up here. It is also possible to peek at the elements in the deck without uh, actually removing them from the deck. And <clears throat> you can see that uh, the deck uh, interface offers or provides several methods for doing so. There's the peak method, which will um, show you the first element uh, in the deck. There's the peak first uh, method, which will do that too. Also uh, return the first element in the deck without removing it. And then there's a peak last, which will show you the last element in the deck. And you also have two other methods here called uh, get first and get last. And the difference between peak first and peak last and get first and get last is that if the uh, deck is empty, uh, peak first, peak last, and peak will just return null, whereas get first and get last will throw an exception. And let's try to run this example, and you can see that we are getting the uh, expected output. Look at this. We have two elements in the deck, and then we peak at the first element uh, here with peak. Then we peak first. That's here again, element one, which was added uh, first to the, to the deck. And then we peak uh, at the last element, which is element two. And the same thing down here. Um, here we have uh, first, which we get with the deck uh, dot get first, and we have last, which we got with get uh, deck dot get last. And as you can see, that's element one and element two. To take elements out of a deck, um, you have a set of methods called uh, remove last, remove and remove first, uh, which remove the last element or remove the first element with remove or remove first, which also removes the first element. Or you have a set of methods called methods called poll last, poll and poll first. And poll last takes the last element out of the deck and poll takes the first element out of the deck. And poll first also takes the first out element out of the deck. Um, the difference between the remove set of methods and the poll set of methods is that if uh, the uh, queue is empty, the remove set of methods here will throw an exception, whereas the poll uh, methods here will simply return null. And finally, there's also uh, a pub method, which is um, similar in functionality to the remove first method, uh, meaning that it will remove the first element from the, from the deck, and if the deck is empty, it will throw an exception. And let's run this example and see what we get out of it. Look at the in the first example, we add element one, two, and three. Then we take the last element out uh, here. It's the first one here. We take element three out, then we take the first element out and the first element out again. So the first element is one and then it's element two, as you can see here, and according to the sequence in which they were added up here. And then the deck is empty. So we just add um, the same elements one more time. And then we do the same thing. We take the last element out of the deck, which is element three. We take the first element out and the first element out, which is element one and two. And um, then the deck is empty again. So we just um, add an element here to the deck again, and we pop it out of the element. And 
we're taking the first element out with pop. And since the deck only contains uh, a single element, then that would be element one that comes out here. You can check if a deck contains a given element uh, using the contains method. And I have an example here showing you how that looks. Um, as you can see, we create a deck, we add an element to it. And then we first check if um, the deck contains the string element one, and then we check if it contains the uh, string element two. And in this example here, we expect the contains method to return true because the deck actually contains element one, this, this string. And in the second uh, example here, we expect the deck uh, contains method to return false because the deck does not contain um, the string element two. And when we run the example, you can see here that that is also what we get out. The deck interface also uh, contains a method uh, named size, which returns the number of elements stored in the deck. And um, you can see in this example that I've created here that we add three elements to a deck. And then I print out the size here. Let's run the example and see what we get. As you can see, we get three because we added three elements. Finally, I want uh, to show you how to iterate the elements of a deck. And the way you do that is um, by either using an iterator or the for each loop or the Java Streams API. And um, with an iterator, you simply call deck iterator, you get an iterator back. That iterator will uh, have a method here, uh, has next method that you can call, which will return true as long as there are more elements in the iterator to iterate, uh, which means as long as there are more elements in the deck to iterate. And then when you call iterator next, you will get each of the elements out one by one. And then we print them out in this example here. You can also use the for each loop. And, uh, and as you can see here, I say for each element in the deck, um, I will execute this uh, loop or this body in here inside the for each loop. And that means that um, each element gets printed out. And each element in the deck will get bound to this element variable for each iteration uh, of the for each loop. The final um, solution or the final yeah, uh, way to iterate the elements of a deck is to use the Java Streams API. And we do that by calling stream to obtain a stream. And then on the stream, we call for each. And, and to for each, we pass a, a Lambda expression. And that Lambda expression is called for each element in the stream, which means each element in the deck. Um, the parameter value here element that is passed to the lambda expression is each of the elements in the stream, meaning each element in the deck, and then we print it out. And let's run this example and see that we will get, as you can see, we will we get element one, two, three, and that's from the iterator iteration. Then we get element one, two, and three, and that is from the for each loop iteration. And then we get element one, two, and three again for the uh, uh, streams API iteration. So you can see that they all do pretty much the same thing. That's all I have to uh, show you about the Java deck interface. If you check out the description uh, below the video, you will find links to a textual version of this tutorial, plus links to other related uh, videos and textual tutorials.